Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. I got some bad news, the streak is over. Not because of any, you know, kind of Isaac play that happened off camera, but if you watch the Northern Lion Live Super Show for Thursday, April 1st, April 2nd, now that I think about it, you will understand why we did an Eden run. I mean, I, can, I guess I can spoil the result a little bit. It didn't necessarily go well. So many times I start a freaking Eden run with a D4, the D100, undefined, or missing now. Seems to happen more often than you'd expect, but there it is right there. Uh, I'm sorry this week ended on the show. It was an accident. Uh, you, you go watch it. It was a genuine loss. It, I did not make, uh, you know, some dumb mistake that got me killed early. It was a real, like, straight up ground down loss that I probably should have won. I guess, I mean, it's a pretty good start here with Squeezy, but I'm gonna reroll it anyway because we have the D4, and then we get Dry Baby, and we still have the Spirit Hearts, and I'll, I'll check out what's going on in here. Dry Baby and the Spirit Hearts, they're playing uh, the Orpheum next week. I'm pretty excited. I was a huge fan of their first album, Balls of Steel. You know, Tears Up was fine, but uh, I, I prefer their stuff where they were originally, you know, getting back to their own roots. Alright, it's been, I haven't played Rebirth, I think, since the... Since the intervening loss, or since the offending loss, so I'm hoping that this will be a good opportunity to kind of get my feet back uh, underneath me, but I'm a little bit skeptical, to be honest. Uh, not skeptical, but a little bit dubious, to be honest, because we've started with the D4 here. This is going to be kind of an unpopular opinion, and, you know, I hesitate to even say it as a result of that, but I'm actually getting a little tired of the D4, D100, Undefined, and missing the... I, I swear to God, I... You didn't send any Skype messages for eight freaking hours here, and all of a sudden, as soon as I start recording, I got one. Good lord. Anyway, let's move along here. I shouldn't sound so ornery. I'm not actually ornery right now. I've got the requisite amount of caffeine within my body to start a uh, an Isaac video in good faith here, but I, I was saying, like, I, I'm just kind of over those items in a way. It's almost like, you know... It reminds me of, like, Epic Fetus in Vanilla a little bit, where I'm kind of like, you know, if, if something's really special, but then it shows up all the time, it's not special anymore. You know, there's the, those stories from, like, Victorian England. Eh, paralysis, it could be worse, at least we know. Um, there's those stories from, like, Victorian England, where, like, a uh, kid would get, like, uh, the, the peasant children, at least, would get, like, an orange for Christmas. Now, if you give a kid an orange, they're like, what, are, what the fuck am I going to do with this shit, Dad? I wanted a, I wanted a, an M16. You gave me a freaking citrus fruit. You know? The oranges used to be special, but now the orange... I mean, it's also due to uh, some other complicated issues, increasing standards of living, etc., etc., etc. No longer is scurvy something that could literally kill you. Well, I mean, it, it still could, but it's hard to avoid vitamin C. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is if something's... Uh, if something's absurd but then it shows up all the time it's no longer absurd it's just the way and that's uh that's kind of the way i felt about d4 d100 and all those other like run re-rollers lately including the re-roll rooms it's almost like a little mini krampus-esque fatigue you know how krampus shows up on every run and you're like ugh, krampus okay well we'll, we'll bust out the krampus meta discussion and you know do i want lump of coal do i want the uh, krampus's head Yes, no, etc., etc. It's kind of like a pattern. Old bandage is fine as far as I'm concerned here. Uh, that, that's kind of how I feel. You know, you got the one room, you got the six room, and then you've got like four items that completely change your run when you use them. And I'm just kind of like, you know, just tone it down a little bit. I love it. I love uh, the idea of, of re rolling your whole run. But when it happens so often that it's like sincerely, maybe once every three runs ends up getting completely re rolled. Mostly due to the the dice rooms, obviously. And maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. And I'm sure people are probably like, you know, oh, well, if you hate it so much, just drop the item or stop using it or whatever. Sacrificial dagger. But, that, you know, it's still, it's still interesting. I just sort of wish for the actual, like, I don't know, overarching kind of, like, meta of the game that it didn't exist. If you hear some, uh, if you hear some sounds coming from outside of my room right now, that is our robot vacuum cleaner trying to break in. Cats don't really spend too much time in this room. There's not a whole lot of need for robot vacuuming, but of course there's no way for the robot to know that. At least not yet. If you were a, a robot company, you, you produce robotic appliances, 
Why would you name your company iRobot? That's just... You're just asking for it at that point, aren't you? Okay. Left hand is fine. I mean, Sacrificial Dagger has really helped me out a ton here. Devil is fine. Paralysis, again, good to know. And, uh, Guppy's Collar, which we will take in a weird way. I actually feel like the meta changes a lot for these, uh, Guppy items when you have the D4 and D100, because it's the only constant on the run. So I'm actually very happy to have Guppy's Collar. It might not be my favorite Guppy item, but it is a Guppy item that is, uh, definitely workable. And we get to keep it, which is, you know, something that we can kind of anchor our run to. I'm happy to be re-rolling Judas' Shadow, though. Take it out of the pool so it doesn't show up and cost us a lot of HP on deals with the Devil, and then uh, re-roll it into something that's hopefully a little bit more useful, because our HP is looking fine right now. Now, for all the complaining that I've done, let me remind you that it is... I haven't really subjected it to rigorous analysis, as you might expect, but it is completely possible that... Uh, the D4, D100 are actually some of the best items in the game because they al Oh my god, this is interesting. Um, they allow you to... Nice. They allow you to control what items you have. And the worst case scenario, if you wanted to play it this way, is pretty much just... You know... Keep using uh, the D4, the D100 until you reroll into something that's super overpowered or interesting. And then just never use it again. That might be the way that we tackle it here. I, I love Sacrificial Dagger, and I think the, the run that we have right now is good, but not necessarily uh, not necessarily sold on keeping this forever. Now we do have uh, our second Guppy item. Obviously this gives us a huge leg up on the competition. I don't believe we can reroll, I mean it's like a double-edged sword, you can't reroll Guppy items, but I don't think you can reroll into them either. 48 hour energy, interesting. Health up, very interesting, and very happy to have it on this room where I can use it with uh, Guppy's Paw. Excuse me, can you get the fuck away from the D4 for a second? I think we f we finish fighting the enemies and then we reroll the whole run with the D4, and then we can reroll two more times if we don't like what we got. And if we do like what we got, maybe we'll just stick with it. Again, for all don't don't mistake my complaining as being from a position of like, oh, we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose in the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, and I'm salty about it. That's not really. Where I'm coming from. It's more like, as someone who has invested a lot of time into the game, not to say that my opinion is more valid, but it's coming from a place of experience, I would find the game a little bit more interesting if there was a little rarer to get these items. So this is, uh, this is Cricket's Body, like number one, maybe? Dark Bomb Robo Baby 2.0? Or Robo Baby 1.0, I should say. I actually think that this is pretty good. I mean, the Dark Bum payout is obviously amazing. But I love Cricket's body as well. I think it's a Wonderland, a John Mayer-esque Wonderland. Furious 7 is a John Mayer-esque Wonderland from the mind of uh, writer-director John Singleton. Let's move it along here. Um, whether or not I keep this remains to be seen. However, it's good damage and it's a good base for synergies, so I kind of don't want to reroll it. It's again, it's kind of like that if everything's absurd, nothing's absurd kind of way. It, that, that I personally, you know, believe. You know, I, I've read Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. If Even though I can't pronounce it, I've read it. I can read. I'm not trying to brag about it. I understand that, you know, absurd media, but it's getting a little absurd here. Absurd Media sounds like like a YouTube network that would never pay you. That was uh, damage that I deserve for besmirching the good name of Absurd Media. We'll continue to move it along here. I really like the other thing is that selfishly I'm like, what do I talk about on a run where everything is constantly changing? I don't know, man. They should have sent a poet. I got no... Uh I got no anchor here. Imagine if you were like a, a football announcer, and I'm speaking in this case of American football. Sorry to open that whole can of worms again. And then, you know, every... This would actually be great if they did this for like preseason games, but, you know, every every quarter, they change the rules. So they're like, nah, the point values of touchdowns and field goals are flipped. So they'll be like, well, fuck me, Bob. I'm not really sure what the Raiders are going to do this quarter because this is insane. This is This is basically how I feel right now. It's like we're playing a game of, uh, of Kings or something like that, you know? The famous drinking game where you get to make rules and then, you know, people have got to pay attention to said rules. <laughs> Just once I want to hear... 
You know, every every sports announcer probably lives in fear. They wake up in a cold sweat. What's the matter, honey? I thought I said fuck on air, Barbara. That would have been the end of us. You know, like, I, I want to hear that sometimes, though. I also want to know how you develop sportscaster voice. Because, like, Bear Taffy, I guess I should just talk to Bear Taffy, because he's sort of got it going on there. But I don't, I don't really have a sportscaster voice myself. Like, I got to get, and this is not an insult at all, but I got to get a little bit more nasal, I think, before it really counts. Bombs are key? Eh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I'm going to use a lot of bombs right here. The atmosphere is electric here at Rogers Arena, Bob, as the Vancouver Canucks take on the Winnipeg Jets to see who will take the number four slot in the playoffs. I don't know, that sounded a little bit weird. I think with my natural... Oh, that's such a good crawl space. I think with my natural... I mean, mind you, like, a red chest is a good crawl space based on the, the results we've gotten from it recently, but anyway, I digress. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a little closer to, like, presidential than I am to sportscaster. And that's not uh, me complaining. That's that's a good thing. I don't intend on uh, pursuing a career in in politics or anything like that. I, I have no backing and no basis in it. And let's be honest, all the shit that I've said over the course of uh, you know running this YouTube channel probably puts me in a, a position where I've got some dirty laundry. Is it true, Ryan, that in episode uh, 631 of The Binding of Isaac Rebirth... You said, I hate small towns, and now you're running for mayor of a small town? What's up with that? Well, you see, you know, people gave that, you know, they change as they get older, and <laughs> I'm gonna go, alright. I do not believe that we should be beholden to the zoning protocols of old business as we try to usher in a new era in the Kitchener-Waterloo corridor. Maybe I'm not as presidential as I thought. Of course, now we've got Krampus, who will drop, it doesn't matter, but a uh, lump of coal with Cricket's body might be noteworthy. I was going to say amazing or terrible, but actually I don't know. Because lump of coal is based on time in the air now, I think. But with Ludovico technique, you can see the tier getting bigger on based on distance, but I thought that that was a Ludovico technique, like a hard-coded synergy. I may be mistaken, though. As always, I encourage you to check uh, all of the bullshit that comes out of my mouth with, uh, you know, a more relevant and uh, applicable source like PlatinumGod.co.uk. Don't just spread the information on the sub. I still get people all the time. First off, let let's focus on the positive. I get people all the time who are like, Northern Lion, here's a mechanic that you think it works this way, but it actually works this way, and they provide proof, and I'm extremely happy for that. For example, I've been previously erroneously saying that it is a, 75, a minus 75% chance to get a deal with the devil if you've gotten one on the previous floor. A very nice person on Twitter, I'm going to blow this guy up, came to me and said, you're actually mistaken. Thank you, Dark Bomb. Um, yeah, 48 hour energy is probably better. Even if we're not going to use the D4, we can replace it with something else. He came to me and said, actually, you're mistaken subtly. It's not that you have a 75% diminished chance of, like, a, a flat minus 75. It's that your chance of getting a deal with the devil is multiplied by 0.25. It seems like it's the same thing, but keep in mind that if you blow up, like, or if you have a, a pentagram, or if you have a, uh, you have a beggar and you blow it up, that's not actually going to raise it by the same percentages that you would expect, apparently. That's our guppy pickup right there. And I think we'll just pick up all of this and go buck wild. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Um, it, it would only be increased by one quarter of what you'd normally expect. It's a probabilistic multiplier, almost in the same way that something like soy milk is. And this should be a one run now. We're, we're low on HP, but that's not that big of a deal. Why do we not have the guppies caller chance to respawn, though? That's, that's a little interesting. I'm going to drop... Uh, our uh, left hand, so we can get regular chests, or even golden chests, because we have Guppy's tail. And Spoonbender is so cool. That's an example, and I realize I've told it in a very disjointed fashion here, of, uh, of the way that correcting my Isaac ignorance is done right. What happens a lot of the time is that people will actually tweet me and be like, Hey, fuck boy! You know, this thing that you think works this way doesn't actually work this way. And then I, I tweet him back and I go, well, I, actually it does. Like, here's a link. And they go, ah, shit, my mistake. 
Because, you know, I, I appreciate it either way. And, you know, this is why I actually, to some extent, oh, that's pretty good. I'm getting uh, smarter in Isaac, but uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me how a mechanic works, I guess we didn't really need the goat head that much after we pick up Book of Palau. But if you're gonna tell me how a mechanic works, have some uh, have some ability to back it up, you know, and tell me what you're gonna do now, and maybe at the end of it, we'll just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. That's how we stay copacetic here. Uh, wait, what did we find in our shop? Greed. We're, this is the a good point. We're going to the room so quickly that. Uh, I actually forget what's in them sometimes. This is almost certainly a one run. This is kind of what I was looking for, actually. If we, it, this chain happens all the time. If we can get a, uh, a payout from this judgment, or that judgment for that matter, if we can get a payout from either of these judgments, I was gonna say, that's another judgment. We're getting a little ridiculous here. Then we can get a couple of HP, potentially. And with that HP, we play the Demon Judgment. You might say, why not play the Blood Bank so you can get the money back, but... I don't I don't think we'll need it. I think we'll be able to get more anyway, hopefully via a secret room. And that's actually a really huge help there. I wish you hadn't taken that Red Heart, though, Dark Bum. I, I respect it, I understand what, what you're going for there, but at the same time... Well, I can't do too, that much about it right now. I guess we'll just say that we'll sacrifice an extra Spirit Heart to Demon Judgment instead. Because it'll probably take us a few plays to, to swing it. Or we could we could play this like once. I played it twice because I'm an idiot. Uh, and then we'll blow it up and get some HP and maybe money back from it. That's what I was hoping for right there. Uh, let's blow this up. And I want that half red heart for myself so I can have a little bit of an extra ability to play here. Usually it's like the sixth play. I botched this one miserably. Ugh. I've gotten much more aggressive though, oh okay, I've gotten much more aggressive about uh, playing Demon Judgment and, and even sacrificing Spirit Hearts if necessary. We'll do a little bit more exploration here. I think it's a little bit too basic, you know, a little too uh, too easy to just be like, well we're just gonna play it until we run out of Red Hearts. It's definitely riskier, that was super lucky for us, oh my god, it's definitely riskier to do it the other way, but uh, I, it's fun as well, but now we won't play Demon Judgment because I'll lose my Eternal Heart. And uh, the ability to fly is, I guess, not that worthwhile. I really should have thought of that before we picked it up, but that's okay. What's done is done. I just realized that after being Guppy, we did also pay extra for the ability to fly, and then we also picked up Fate. Look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that those are smart decisions, but what I w especially after rambling about, oh, you know, make sure that you come to me with primary sources about Binding of Isaac related incidents uh, so you can, you know, be confident that in your knowledge of the mechanics, but for real, I'm, I'm kind of just like... I, I flipped the switch from like normal run to casual run right now. Let's just pick up every single deal with the devil item that we can get. And in my defense, I did really, literally become guppy about 10 seconds before picking up Lord of the Pit. Which maybe for some people means it should have been in the forefront of my mind, but for me it means like I, I didn't have a chance to get used to the, the newfound equilibrium that I found myself in. Poison Touch apparently uh, not as good in Rebirth as it is in Vanilla. We got it though, and we didn't really pay that much for it, based on my understanding. Let's move it along here. We probably uh, threw our chance at Boss Rush, but at the end of this floor, we also picked up 3 HP from a base of 0, which is pretty solid. And a few items. And we're also Guppy and a win pretty much in the can here, whether we want or not. I'm gonna blow this guy up, just because we don't have the money necessary anyway. Let's stop trying to siphon my, my shit publisher's clearinghouse. I need that money so I can purchase mom's key and quote unquote ball out of control. 515. It's almost the video game publisher that put out uh, Terraria on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. There's another tinted rock back there. Spirit Heart's probably pretty non essential, but uh, Golden chest can be nice, and I would very much like to pick up, uh, pick up, a uh, small rock. We actually are lacking a little bit in the damage department. That would change if I actually used Book of Belial for once, but what am I, some kind of super genius over here? The moon. I'll take it. I hate it because with, uh, Amnesia, 
I may never be able to go back and get that 48 hour energy pill, but that's okay because we got our own 48 hour energy pill. See if I care. Oh, we've been in here. And then this is where we blew that guy up and it's a dead end and then up here and then to the right? No. This was a dead end as well. So it's to the right down here that we will find our other 48 hour energy pill. So in truth, we should probably just like, it's not even worth using here, but we'll pop it and then drop it so uh, that we have that extra battery and we can always go back if we want. A little bit key prohibitive there, but then it paid out with four keys, so I'm not too worried about this. Ultimate shot pickup now is definitely hive mind. Is Cricket's body what was allowing us to generate so many flies here? This seems like a, a very surprisingly high amount of flies, considering my rate of fire. Oh, my rate of fire is not that bad. I actually want to keep regular hearts so Dark Bum stays useful. That, I'll admit, is a situation where I'm a little bit in the dark on things. You know, the, the more niche uses of uh, Demon Tail, or Damon Tail, Matt Damon's Tail. Do we want to take Forget Me Now? I think uh, there, there's, there's too much saying yes, if that makes sense. Strength card. I mean, we can go back for that other 48 hour energy, but we're about to lose our uh, space bar item if I take Forget Me Now anyway. I think we finished the floor. To a heart set, that's perfect. I think we finish the floor uh, so that we get our deal with the devil because we have Goathead, Book of Belial, and then we say, you know what? Uh, let's forget me now so we get another deal with the devil. And we've already fought Krampus, and we've already become Guppy, so... You know, we know what we want from a deal with the devil, which is basically just insanely good stat upgrades or tier effects at this point. Dark Bomb, you could, like, be a little bit more independent. I don't think you always need me to be around and hold your hand, you know, Paul McCartney here. Gotta be coming close to our boss room. I would be surprised, I was gonna say, if it wasn't directly adjacent to us. <clears throat> and I could buy the 9 volt. I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. I could buy a piggy bank. I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. Uh, we, especially because we're probably not gonna need the money. Well, actually, I'll be very thankful to have a... Uh, a second crack at a boss room here, because I don't really want that. Brother Bobby is at best okay. And if we're going to be using or losing Book of Belial anyway, we might as well take the pony with us. Look at that! It's definitely making it faster for us to traverse those big rooms. Let's uh, waste a key. You sacrifice a key to the key gods, and then it becomes, uh, you know, they, they pay dividends on future floors. It's just science. Alright, so we'll forget me now. And we'll try this again. I mean, it, we're kind of delaying the inevitable. This is going to be a win unless something absolutely catastrophic happens. But why not at least uh, have some fun with it in the meantime? Forget me now. I've been talking a lot about items that have gotten worse in my uh, in my approximation, at least. How about items that have gotten better? Forget me now in the five room. Uh, I think in uh, in rebirth they're actually a lot better. The five room especially for obvious reasons, but. I, I find myself using Forget Me Now an awful lot. Is it worth losing Book of Belial for Forget Me Now? Absolutely not, but... Is it fun and, you know, could, could it... You know, it's kind of like having... a hundred billion dollars and being like, I'm not gonna put a thousand dollars on roulette. That's not financially savvy. You're right, but at the same time, you know, we could have a little excitement in our lives by doing that here, so I'm gonna do it. If that makes sense. Not everything's about the uh, well, in video games, at least not everything is just about making the soundest decision. It's making decisions that are deliberately unsound for kind of like ironic benefit, you know? You don't want to be the kind of guy who goes and watches the room and he goes, I'm not enjoying myself. This movie sucks. You're missing out, man. That's the point. That's the joke. You suck, McBain! Anyway. Northern Line, that's a played out reference from the television cartoon known as The Simpsons. That's my my uh, my accountant voice. Maybe that's something I could consider. So we haven't really improved ourselves too much on this floor, but every floor that we go to is another chance to pick up Hive Mind and truly ball with the smallest amount of control conceivable. That's not Hive Mind. We might as well buy Blue Candle. I think we're probably going to get enough money to, uh... 
Well, HP cap? No. I think we're probably gonna get enough money to buy something on the next floor anyway, so why not buy a blue candle and just... It, it augments our damage to the point where I am pretty much not concerned about anything at all. Plus, it saves us some, some of our fly army, which is nice. Let's see what we get via our deal with the devil here. Hey, this is a... Uh, an orbital, which is actually one of the most effective items we could probably hope to get right now. It's, it's quietly, like, really nice and defensive. I mean, if we just get a few more forget-me-nows, maybe we can turn that into a third-level cube of meat. Well, that's probably straight up the worst deal with the devil you could possibly imagine. But what was I expecting, I guess? By the way, literally, you know, here's your theory crafting exercise, but I think it's, it's a little easy. Um, what would literally be the worst deal with the devil that you could possibly get? I think it would have to be like, it would have to be pills. So if you had three red chests, and they all paid out with, uh, with pills. And then they gave you, like, one health downgrade that you didn't know, a speed downgrade, a tears downgrade, a bad trip, and like a range downgrade. Because if they give you two bad trips, that could theoretically cancel each other out eventually, even if not immediately, right? So, it's, it's kind of an interesting theory craft exercise, I guess. Like, one of every bad attribute pill, plus bad trip. Oh, you paid out a little faster than normal. The moon, and two of diamonds. I will pop two of diamonds. Hopefully we'll get some more HP back, but again, I, I don't really mind giving more money to judgment. Demon judgment, I should say. Eh, we could, did very well on keys there. Midas touch. For example, some people have been coming up to me and telling me that, hey, Northern Lion, Midas Touch does not actually do contact damage based on your... Eh. Does not actually do contact damage based on your amount of money. That's Piggy Bank that does that. I don't know if that's true, though. Because I had... Uh, Kate and I were playing a co-op run very, very recently. Like, like two Thursdays ago, I think. As a... Uh, Eden, and we started with Unicorn Stump Midas Touch, and as we got more damage, we just started to, like, spiral out of control in a very good way. 48 hour energy. Full health, that's what I was looking for. You know, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a source to back it up, but even then, I think that, that Platinum God actually had erroneous information there. No offense, Aloof. Maybe you're right, actually. Maybe it, maybe it is Piggy Bank, and we had Piggy Bank, and I just didn't realize it as well. Tears up. Tears up, health up, robots in disguise. It's another one of those songs that blurs together for me, man. Get Up, Stand Up is the Transformers theme song in my head. I recognize, by the way, that I am giving spirit hearts to Demon Judgment here. We have Dark Bum. I'm not very concerned about our long-term chances of survival. I will continue to give him... Uh, Occasionally, half spirit hearts and spirit hearts. I don't want to get too crazy here. If we end up losing this run, which I know, I know that whenever I make a stupid decision like this, there are people that actively start rooting against me to kind of like show me the error of my ways. Well, you know, show me the meaning of being lonely, man, because we're doing just fine here. I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. Also, if you're rooting against me, Hey, it's possible, man, but you might want to pick a different run. You should go back and watch Thursday's NLSS. You know, you'll you'll have a much better time there, I think, than you will right now. Because this run is looking pretty exceptional. It's, it's pretty much a lock. Unless something goes absolutely terribly, inconceivably wrong. It, it can literally happen. I doubt it will. I'm gonna go ahead and say Boss Rush is probably unlikely here. Yeah. You guys hear the news that uh, Rebirth is coming to Xbox One and new 3DS? It's pretty crazy. I can't really see myself playing it on Xbox One. I do own an Xbox One. Boo this man! No, don't boo this man. How about you let me make my own decisions in my life? You freaking, you, you judgmental so-and-sos. I'll have you know that I played 15 minutes of Super Time Force a year ago, and I had a good time. Anyway, um, I, I mean, I have a, a PS4, I have Rebirth on the PS4, but I rarely play it on the PS4, or even on the Vita, unless I'm traveling, and I don't, oh my god, and I don't have a laptop with me, because the, I don't know, the, the versions, they just seem kind of like the, 
the inferior versions. That being said, if the 3DS version actually handles performance a little bit better than the Vita did, I should say the new 3DS, because, again, there is a hardware distinction there. People are mad at, at Nicholas for not being able to put it on the old 3DS, or, the, you know, just the 3DS to avoid confusing nomenclature here. That was amazing. Money equals power and Midas Touch, by the way, means that if we get Unicorn Stump, we're doing so well. I'll take Rusted Key. I could use some keys. Um, I, you know, I don't blame Nicholas for that. It's older hardware. I don't think they're, it's definitely not a business decision. If you were uh, making a business decision about that, you would probably say, hmm, I'll, maybe I'll try to put it on the console that has sold like 75 million units, as opposed to the one that just came out. But uh, I think they're, they're actually just genuinely excited to have Rebirth on a Nintendo peripheral, and I think that's pretty cool news. It's cool that it's it's showing up everywhere. What what was even happening on this room? Uh, it's cool that it's showing up everywhere because you know the more I'm I'm happy that people that only own like Microsoft products are going to get introduced to Rebirth potentially. Pardon me, and I'm happy that people who only own uh, Nintendo products are going to be introduced to Rebirth. Hell, some of you might have found this video six months later as a result of that uh, interaction. How strange is that? That's pretty cool. We don't have mom's key, but that chest paid out, in, like, insanely. I think it's a good thing either way. If you own an old 3DS and also do not own a Vita, it really sucks that you still have no options to play Rebirth on the go. That's the way the cookie crumples, I guess. It's, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, like, you know, tough titties, but... At the same time, that's, you know, that's how it happens. Don't really want mysterious candy. I guess we're pretty much good to go here after I go to the shop. And buy hive minds. That is not hive minds. I'll tell you what. We'll buy a key. We'll buy the spirit heart, and then we'll just wedge ourselves back here. Pretty decent chance we make it over 400 here. No, all right. <laughs> Either way, I think it's cool. Even if I don't intend, uh, at least right now, on on playing too much of those new versions, I think it's it's neat and. Uh, you know, the, the fact that they didn't have to compromise their vision to put it on a Nintendo product especially is, is surprising to some extent. Didn't really need to take that HP, but I did take it. Pretty much the easiest mom fight you could possibly ask for, and... Spirit of the Night. Again, we have so many abilities to fly that this is just stupid, but I'll take it anyway. Just because we can, you know, exhaust as much of the pool as is possible here. Plus, Afterbirth comes out soon. Not soon, necessarily. People, I think, because it was announced so early, people were under the impression that, uh, you know, Afterbirth would be out, like, in the winter season or something like that, or early spring. Uh, based on Edmund's blog, it's like they're targeting summer. I can't remember. I thought I made, like, a prediction, like, six months ago, and I was like, I think it'll be out, like, in August, in the summer sometime. I don't have any inside information. Uh, at all. It just seemed to me like that was going to be the timeline. Like, Rebirth was announced way in advance of its release. Now that we live in a post-Rebirth universe where the game is already out, it's easy to forget that, you know, we waited like two and a half years for it. If you were like a huge fan of the original game. Like, from the time it was announced, I remember... I think that Ed in uh, in 2013 said it will definitely be out this year and then you know like the year came and went and actually after they started after Nicholas started putting out blog posts it became clear pretty quickly that it was gonna take a little bit longer which is fine it's not like we were just left out in the lurch being like what the heck's going on with this but oh man easy to forget that that weight was actually crazy as it's like the only game I've been hyped for in like four years. And it delivered, man! I gotta say, for all the, the negativity surrounding like high profile video game releases lately, and Binding of Isaac is high profile, don't let it uh, trick yourself. It was the number two seller like the week it came out behind the new Call of Duty. Look, you can be as cynical as you want about Call of Duty, it sells a lot of copies. For, for Rebirth to beat that consistently would be very surprising. But for it to even, you know, be up there is, uh, is amazing. And this, it, it delivered, man. 
very, very minor complaints, I think. There are still people out there, and you're, some of you are probably watching the video. Um, I realized that we didn't let Dark Bomb get that HP. It, it's gonna be fine, don't worry about it. Um, there's, there's people out there that prefer uh, the original to Rebirth for reasons other than just soundtrack-based soundtrack reasons. And I don't really worry about that too much. I, I like both soundtracks, but uh, I, I'm very interested to know why. It looks like Ceremonial Robes is going to be our last deal with the Devil item, short of getting a Joker card, which could happen, of course. Don't really want that. At this point, we can probably start talking about speeding this run up a little bit. I'm very excited for Afterbirth, you know. I've never been one of those guys who is like, you know, I, I played Dota. Dota is probably still, Dota 2 I should say, is probably still my most second played game of all time behind the vanilla version of Rebirth. And it might even be close. And it's ridiculous, man, because I only played Dota, there were probably six months of my life where I played Dota. In those six months, and they were separated by like a year and a half, in those six months, I have almost a thousand hours in it on Steam. It's fucking crazy. It, like, don't don't run the math on that. It's probably like six hours a day during the days that I was playing. It's ridiculous. And I know there's a lot of people who have way more time in the game than that. Um, and that's fine, because, you know, as long as you're, you're accomplishing the responsibilities... Whatever, we'll do this now. As long as you're accomplishing the responsibilities that you need to accomplish in your life, and, you know, playing the game that much isn't holding you back or, like, really compromising the quality of your life, and you're enjoying yourself, who cares? Or who should care, let's put it that way. I know who cares, but who should care. But anyway, um, even when, uh, when I was that into Dota, when patch notes would come out and they'd be like, we changed the cast speed on Lion's spike attack to 0 0.8 seconds from 0 0.74. I was never like, like, I never really thought that was a huge deal, although a lot of people did. But now, like, whenever there's patch notes for Rebirth and they change the mechanics of an item, I'm like, what are you doing? You shouldn't have changed the walk speed to 0 0.81. It was totally fine at 0.795. Like, and it, it's... It's so weird that, like, a single-player only... I mean, there's co-op, but, like, a non-online multiplayer game has brought that out of me. I never would have thought that it was it was possible. And I recognize that, you know, there's still a ton of Isaac players better than myself, specifically if you're looking within, like, the speedrun communities, and the stuff that those uh, guys and girls are capable of accomplishing is insane. However, man, I'm starting to... I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a big head. There's like three degrees of niceness. The first degree is I'm not going to get a big head. The second degree is I'm going to get a big head, but I'm going to recognize it and feel not humble about it, which is I, I recognize as suboptimal. And then the third is I'm going to get a big head and go fuck yourself because I'm, you know, John Travolta, fuck you. I don't know if John Travolta actually acts like that. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, you know, I, I think... If I really rededicated myself to the cause of learning how to speedrun, I'm not saying I'm going to be number one. You think I could get top 16? There's a lot of work to be done. This is like, you know, the strongest kid in, in Philadelphia being like, I'm gonna make the Eagles! You know, you got a, you got a lot of work to do. But you think, you think I got the potential? Be real with me. Might surprise you, there's this weird reputation that Northern Lion is an idiot. I actually consider myself, you know, not a genius necessarily, but, you know, pretty intelligent. I have, I have succeeded in scholarly environments. I can on the fly, and this is, I'm basically just listing my CV right here. On the fly, capable of uh, assembling absurd diction to create a comedic response in his audience. I don't know, man. I don't know if I ever even want to be the speedrun, or a speedrun kind of guy, which is not to say that I think that speedrunning is, is silly or anything like that. I just think it's a lot of pressure, man. Like, on this, this is a 33 minute long run. I'm largely relaxed because I'm free from that uh, constant nagging voice at the back of my brain that is like, how fast could this run have been if I hadn't made X mistake? You know, I don't know if I necessarily have... I Like, I have... I'm a brute force kind of guy when it comes to things. I don't find elegant solutions. I just... I have a great ability to just turn off the part of my brain that's like, this is boring, and then just go for it. Like, in Kingdom Hearts 1... Way back in, like, 2003. Mind you, I had a lot more free time back then. But, uh, yeah, we could probably make do with this. Um, you start on, like, this island, and there's a little mini-game that kind of teaches you the attacking mechanics of the game. 
I w after I beat the game once, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get to level nine, uh, 99 just by bouncing Waka's ball back at him with like the stick here. You gotta time it semi-perfectly to do it. Um, but if you do it perfectly, if you do it adequately, you get one experience. If you do it inadequately, you get double the experience. I was like, this will take me like 415 hours. And I did like 100 hours of it. Now, I didn't finish the job, so it's not that impressive. I'm just saying, you know, I got the ability to, to turn my brain off. If it so comes to it. You know what? I think E. coli and Midas Touch, with the amount of money that we have, and permanent Polaroid invincibility, makes it like completely conceivable almost for us to just walk into these rooms and, and pretty much just walk straight into the enemy. Like, I'm not going to do it on... Uh, on easy rooms. We got a luck downgrade, right? So I wouldn't expect to get too many chests here, unfortunately. Um, that would have been so good if that was a unicorn stump, but anyway. On rooms that actually have some difficult enemies, I'm gonna try to run into said difficult enemies, even if it does hurt us a little bit. I think it's gonna make us, uh, I think it's gonna make for a funny run, let's put it that way. Because we're gonna be turning all the enemies that we kill into golden poop, and also because we have 90 cents, I believe that we're doing 90 contact damage to enemies when we touch them, which is actually just stupid powerful. Like, that's crazy strong. Luckfoot? Hey, man. Better to have it now than to get it later, I think. We will come down here. Key beggar? Eh. To be honest, a key beggar might not have been the right play there. That's not me fishing for compliments, by the way. If you think that I would not, because uh, I know there's a new Balls of Steel running and there's going to be tryouts for it. Balls of Steel being the, uh, it, well, it was originally vanilla, but now it's like uh, Rebirth, obviously. Uh, speed running tournament, which is basically like 1v1s. It's competitive Binding of Isaac, similar to Boiler. Uh, and I believe it's organized and commentated by uh, Cobalt. As I've had some people asking me. I, I, I feel a little bit like Rocky. And it's not fair to say that, and I recognize that it's not fair to say that, because you cheer for Rocky. Nobody cheers against Rocky, so to say you cheer for Rocky, it's painting yourself a little bit, you know, as the people's champion against a host of villains. Which is not fair, man. If anything, I'm kind of the villain to the Isaac speedrunning community if I were to compete in Balls of Steel, because these people would be like, you know, I've dedicated a hundred hours to this, and they're not a hundred, probably like, I've dedicated thousands of hours to this, and then this fucking guy just comes in and is like, hey, I think I can do this. And if he does, well then, like, maybe, like, that's, I've, I've said this before, man. I hate, I hate cheering for the underdog sometimes. I would be the underdog in this situation, I think. But I hate cheering for the underdog because it, you know, being the overdog requires a lot of persistence, you know? To remain being number one in something requires a lot of work. Anyway, if you're the underdog, usually your only qualification is like, you know, I'm, I was worse. I was consistently worse than this person in like the regular season or in previous play. I don't know, I, I, this has become like a long and rambling kind of stream of consciousness. We'll see though, maybe I'll try out for it. I know when I when people in Twitch were like, or people uh, in Twitch chat during the NLSS were like, you know, a new Balls of Steel is starting. It would be cool to see you play in like some exhibition matches or something like that. Felt like Rocky Balboa, man, in uh, in the movie the Rocky Balboa, aka Rocky Six, where you know ESPN runs the computer simulation of him versus Mason the Line Dixon and determines that you know Mason the Line Dixon would win. He's like, I don't get that. I I want to give it a shot, Bob. You know. Just, just to know. Maybe one day they'll make a movie about it. It could be my very own dodgeball, a real underdog story. That was an, we did so much contact damage that he couldn't even hit us when we were right next to him because he died too fast. That's ridiculous. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.